Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Brad Barton. Thank you, Jade. Thank you. Some challenges in my family of origin left me with the tendencies towards nitpickiness, perfectionism. Okay, quite a bit of nitpickiness and perfectionism. I was concerned about this, and when I started my family, um, I was concerned enough about this that I decided that I didn't want, uh oh, we got some, some of my slides up? That's not my family. <laughs> He's my brother, though. Love that man. He's good. Why don't you see if we can toss my, uh, my uh, yeah, there you go. So when I started my family, I had, a t I had uh, these tendencies, and I was a little concerned about it because I didn't want to bring those, uh, those tendencies into the next generation. Can you, can you imagine this? But try as I might, and oh, I tried mightily. I just could not seem to break the habit of looking at the bad stuff in my family. My wife, bless her heart, she scolded me often for scolding my kids so often. But, and she was right. I, I needed to, to change. I needed to do something different. But I just didn't know why, or I didn't know how. Um, the computer industry has a word they use. It's defaults. And I looked it up. Um, just a couple of definitions for computer defaults. Settings that a device automatically selects in a given scenario. Default. A standard configuration. A preset. That's a computer default. Some defaults set incorrectly in my own parenting habits. I needed to create better life skills so that I could get along better with my kids with, with them. Now, the human brain is the fastest working, coolest running, most compact and efficient computer mechanism ever produced in large quantities by unskilled labor. <laughs> did, did you know that? We've got this here. We've also got software written over the top of it. We all have defaults. Many of you drove here to uh, at least 100 life or death decisions, and you didn't even think about it. Why? Because of the defaults. We've got lots of defaults to help our, our lives run great. Uh, we have defaults also for how we handle stress and how we handle conflict, how we handle disappointments. We just do. Folks, some of the most important defaults in our lives were created in our youth, and some of them aren't serving us well anymore. I was a uh, very early age. Oh, that's convenient. Yeah. I was raised on a cattle ranch near Salmon, Idaho, and my, uh, my dad is a pretty harsh taskmaster. We worked hard, and I, I got, to, uh, what, I got to, to elementary school, and uh, I had some, some preconceived notions about what I was capable of doing because of some of these tough experiences. I was uh, very undersized, uh, very immature for my age, I have some learning disabilities that, that created some defaults about what I was capable of as well. The teasing got worse in middle school, right? Step off the bus the first day in high school, brand new backpack on, new jeans. I'm in high school at four foot nine. I weighed 82 pounds. I was having trouble at home. I was an academic failure. I did not like myself, folks. I was in trouble. And that's when I decided to become an athlete. All four foot nothing and 82 pounds. And I went for the obvious sport, which was? It wasn't football. No. They're still mocking me. Team And my wrestling coach, bless his heart, this wonderful man, George Artemis. After just a few weeks in the, into the season, he says, Brad, if you want to change your story, and I badly wanted to change my story, then you've got to change your stories. Folks, that's golden. If you want to change your story, you got to change your stories. Are words that powerful? Could we change our story by the words that we speak? Let's give it a try right here. Help me out here. And I'm going to invite you all to, to, to participate, unless you've done this before. So everybody else, here we go. Answer a very simple question. You'll, you'll recognize this if you, if you played. Answer a very simple question, lightning fast. What color is an orange? Okay, that was not lightning fast, folks. All the other, here we go. What color is an orange? Did I mention these are easy questions? What color is an orange? 
That's what we're looking for is a fast, speedy answer in unison. But first say the word white. white. All together, white. white. Louder, white. white. Let's say the word white 10, 12 times in a row. Let's get louder and faster as we go. And I'm done. I'm going to wait for just the briefest moment. Then I'm going to invite you to fire off the answer as fast as you can, lightning fast in unison. Unless you've heard this before and then you're out of the game. Okay, this is, this is a great object lesson. You don't want to steal it from everybody else. And one person in this room could maybe do that. So don't play if you've played. Okay, all together, everybody else. White. white. Again, white. 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 Louder, white. White, 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 white. What do cows drink? No. Rupert, Idaho. <laughs> I was in Rupert, Idaho one night speaking to the Southern Idaho Dairymen's Association. I had 80 dairymen in the, in the room that now, and I yell out, cows drink milk. <laughs> yes, cows don't drink milk, they drink. Let's do one more. This time say the word joke. Together, joke. Again, joke. Let's spell it, J-O-K-E. Let's say the word joke. Joke, 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 joke. What do you call the white part of an egg? Yolk. The yolk is the yellow part. Oh, time out. This is what we just did. Think about this. I just told you a one word story, didn't I? I had you repeat that one word story a few times. You say crazy things like, cows drink milk. No, they don't. Little tiny baby calves do. Are words a little bit powerful or a lot of bit powerful? Oh, yeah. I'll show you in a different way, a more subtle way, perhaps a more powerful way. The power of words. Now, you need to get where you can see my, my eyes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute this. You need to get where you can see my, my hand. We've got we to gotta make sure we get this on the iMag for those that have got the wrong angles here. Watch right here. If you blink, you're going to miss it. And don't quit going like that. It's freaking me out. Watch right here. I have a card. There is one dot. The other side, four dots. Once again, in review, three on this side, six on that side. How many of you confused? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Come on, think about what you just saw. Did you see one dot on the first side? Yes? That's because that's what I showed you. How about four dots on the next side? And then three, and then six, and back to one dot all over again. One, four, three, six. Count with me. One, four, three, six. Out loud. One, four, three, six. Louder. One, four, three, six. And back to one dot all over again. How many of you are still confused? Raise them up. Okay, the, the trick should only work one time, Mrs. Herbert. <laughs> Would you like me to tell you how I do the trick? Yeah. I do it with the power of my words. The word one, and you believed it. And then I showed you the deal. The second time through, I said the number three. Now check this. This is kind of this is cosmic. I said the number three. I told you a one-word story, and I repeated it once. I said three. You look up here and you see that, and we put it all together in 200 milliseconds. One, two, three, I'm off to the next side. And you're left with the vision of seeing three black dots. Ladies, gentlemen, how many black dots did Magic Brad just show you? One dot and then three dots? Boy, I showed you I showed you that. Are words a little bit powerful or a lot of it powerful? Oh, absolutely. Let's say the word three. Is it possible that we can create magic by our words? I would submit that we do. So back to my dilemma. Here I am trying to be a good father, but the nitpicking is just as a sticky little problem that won't seem to go away. And then years later, I'm, I'm at a self-improvement seminar. And across the, the screen, this is what I saw. Make it a habit to catch people doing things right. And I looked at that and I thought, that's it. That's the answer. If I can't stop doing the wrong thing, maybe I can start doing more of the, the right things. So I went home with hope, determined to catch my kids doing things right. 
My oldest son, Jacob, was six years old, and I watched him, and I noticed him. A few days went by, <laughs> and finally I caught him. He was sitting at the kitchen table, as I recall, and I said, Jacob, I just caught you. He's like, oh, no, I caught you doing it right, buddy. High five, pal, and we high fived, and, and, uh, and that was it. That was the, maybe the single diff- the biggest change I made in my personal parenting that made the biggest impact on the culture of our family. I just simply got in the habit of catching my kids doing things right. And there he was doing something else right, and something else, and something else, and something else. It became a game for us. We started lying in wait for each other. My kids catching, catching me doing something right. And, and it became a part of our family culture. Now, months later, I guess I'd fallen off on my commitment. I'm in the, the living room, as I recall it. I heard a blood-curdling scream in the, in the kitchen. Dad, get in here quick. I ran, and it was my Jacob, now seven years old, with a, with a knife in his hand. I was expecting to see blood. and He's got a knife in his hand and a, a mostly made peanut butter sandwich on a plate. <laughs> he says, look, Dad, you just got me, Dad. You just got me doing it right, didn't you, Dad? High five, buddy. And I high-fived him, and we were, I was back in business. Folks, it became a part of our family culture again, and, and I was able to get through some of that nitpickiness. I still have those tendencies. Does anybody here have some sticky little problem that's keeping you from being the parent that you want to be? Even some of you share one of mine. That made a huge difference when I stopped focusing on what, um, on, on what my kids were doing wrong and started catching them doing right. There is a word that is, um, that is very ancient. The word is abracadabra. It sounds vaudeville, but uh, I looked this up, and I know I, that what I'm going to tell you is true because I read it on the internet. <laughs> okay, I actually looked a little deeper. This seems to be the truth. Etymologists, I think I'm, I think I'm using that term right, have tried to figure out where this word may come from, and it's so ancient, they wonder if they will ever work it out. Abracadabra, their best guess is that it's ancient Aramaic. And if so, the, 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 the sounds that make up that phrase might translate roughly to, I create as I speak. Or I create what I speak. Folks, words cast spells. That's why they call it spelling. Okay, now that's cute, right? But it's also amazing. What if we decided we're going to use the power of our words to reprogram our defaults and create a different, some different defaults in our, in our family culture? It works, folks. It works. If you work it, it works. Do you need to make a change in your culture? I was, um, I was chopping wood one time. With this happy little, there's my little, there's my little Jacob man at, at six years old. I was chopping wood with this handsome little fella right here. And he was about this age. And we had these great big pieces of wood that we were trying to, was really struggling to get up onto our chopping block and, and begin to drive in the wedges. And uh, we'd, we'd set several up there, and, and it was just a struggle with this little kid and this, you know, fairly petite dad. And, we, and um, well, the next one, I drove my axe handle deep. And I stuck it in, and I used that handle and just flipped it right up there on our chopping block and, uh, and, and give it a, a bit of a, a tug, and, and, uh, and I was ready to drive in the next wedges. And I looked over at my son, very impressed, little, little Garrett, and he said, hey, Dad, you're pretty smart, which dads love to hear. <laughs> and so I said, the great Greek mathematician once said, give me a long enough lever and I will move the world. Then I went on chopping wood. And there was, there was a little I was impressed with all this. And maybe silently, maybe, maybe a full minute later, he says, so dad, did they ever give that fellow a long enough lever? <laughs> because I want to introduce to you, uh, this is, uh, I, I just told you a story about little Garrett. And this is my son Garrett right here. Uh, he's now 21. Would you stand please, Garrett? This is Garrett. And he brought his particular friend, Abigail. Would you stand as well, Abigail? My son done grown up. (laughs) And there he is. Thank you, Garrett, for being here tonight. Folks, every environment has social norms. Every, every, um, 
Every family has some, some positive traits and some that need to be worked on. Folks, if you want to use this lever, try this one. What you say more, you see more. What you say more of, you see more. Amazing things with the power of positive perception that we used um, to create a lever to change out our defaults, to, to create a more of a, of a, a habit of, of bringing to our parenting a, a power of positive perception. We can, we can change our, our families. We can change our relationships. Folks, it can change ourselves. It can change ourselves. Let's try, let's try a little experiment. Put your hands out like this. Okay, thank you. Palms out. Just lift your hands in front of you. Palms out. Left over right. Put your left wrist over your right wrist, and then just knit your fingers together. Great. Now lift, now lift your hands a little higher, and then turn your thumbs up. Not so good? Okay, let's try it again. Let's try it again. It's not my left. It's your left over right. Let's try it like this. Get your fingers together. Just lift your hands and then turn your thumbs slowly up. Even Gary Herbert's having a look. Let's try it again. Folks, let's Knit your fingers together. If this, right here, if this represents all the minutia, the details, the many important details, like four soccer games this, uh, just this morning that my, my family had, if that all represents those important details, watch this. Let's not forget to look at the big picture. Watch. Lift your hands a little. Yeah, here you go. Good job. Lift your hands a little higher and we can get free from being stuck in our programming that just wasn't working for us. Then give yourselves a hand. L look at the big picture. Keep your eye on the prize. Guys, because these, these little kiddos, they're not going to be around. They just aren't. Take it from a dad who's, whose oldest is now 27. I've got, I've got four of, of my six out of the home now. It's just a brief time. Let's remember the power of positive perception. We can, we can use this in other areas of life. Just really quickly, uh, my, my co catching people doing things right. My coach used this idea. A rancher kid from Idaho with some issues and, and created success in college. And then years and years later, we came back to track and decided we're going to work together again. Our old, my old uh, retired college coach, uh, Olympic uh, 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 coach, and, and go to see if we can break some world records. And we broke one, and then we broke another one, and then some discouragement and some doubt and some failure in three years of, of broken, uh, uh, broken toes and broken foot and hand injury and ripped quad. In three years trying to get to, to the starting line again to try and break a master's 50-year-old record. And, then, and, and failure after failure after failure, my coach used the power of positive perception to say, Brad, here's the story. Here's where we're headed. I caught you doing it right. He didn't use those terms, but he used this power of positive set perception. And we went and worked hard for years and years and years. And, and then we went and did something that's never been done. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all remember, let's all remember to use this wonderful power of positive perception. Let's, let's decide that we're going to change the things that we need to change. And using the power of our words, well, just like magic, we can go do some wonderful things with our family as well. Thank you very much for inviting me to be part of this. What a pleasure. Thank you.